I've made a bit of a mess. So you know those times when you go home after a long day's work and you just, you go to bed and you think, I know something, I know I haven't done something right. And you just sit there thinking and you can't sleep and you're just like, ah, uh, there's something there that I haven't checked. And finally it came to me that when I was checking if the neck was flat or not with a straight edge, I was checking if it was flat along its center line. However, what I didn't check is if it was flat along the edges of here. Because we have a compound radius going on, it's quite easy to take off too much on one end and not enough on this end, for example, thus giving us a bow. So down the center, checked it was perfectly all right, but didn't check the edges. And as a result, I have been left with this mess with extra peanut butter, apparently. That, that's my lunch. I have a weird addiction to peanut butter at the moment. I don't, I don't quite know what my issue is, but yeah. So I basically had to replane the flat board. Replane the flat board. Replane the flat board. Wow, it's gonna be one of those days. I had to replane, oh my Lord. I had to replane the fretboard. And I chose to use my number four smoother for this because of the shorter sole, so I could really focus on the area that I needed to take out the high spot on. It was literally bang on in the center of the fretboard. So just a few short strokes of this did the trick. And then obviously I had to go through the entire sanding process again, 180, 240, 320, and finally 400. But it has been left with a lovely shine as we had before. Uh, the only thing I had to do was go back along all of the fret slots with my saw and just get rid of all that dust in there because that would prevent the frets from seating in there. So that explains half the mess on this workbench, but then the other bits like this Buckeye Burr Top, I have been laying out where all of the pickups and where the bridge and stuff is gonna go on there to make sure I get the orientation correct. And I can start thinking about where I'm going to place all of these splits in the body. Because so far I've just been working off CAD software. I haven't actually drawn the physical guitar on this bit of Buckeye yet, but now it's on there, you can see it's a very faint outline of the guitar going all the way around the Buckeye and the pickup locations are also on here. So the neck sort of ends around here. And then we've got the first pickup there, which is about, what's that, 40 mil? Yeah, 40 millimeters between, probably another 40 mil between the second pickup, and then maybe 50 mil going to the bridge there. So having a physical alignment like this, rather than a render or some measurements or anything like that, being able to see it properly like this means that I can actually start working out where to cut all of these splits in the body. Which, as you know, was no mean feat. This has taken a lot of refinement from start to finish all the way through the design process and now into the making series. But finally, after all of that hard work trying to get this to work out, we have got an orientation and thank God it is gonna work. So what I'm gonna do now is I need to figure out a way to cut the split that is going to go underneath the first pickup. Um, I don't have a scroll saw in this workshop. The only thing I've got is my new concept fret saw which is great for dovetailing but cutting through 40 millimeter thick ash is going to be a bit challenging can't get it with a bandsaw because i need to be able to loop the blade through it in order to cut out a hollow area um, the only real solution i have is something like this if i want to do a shaped cut or maybe drill it out chisel it out rasp it out i think it's going to be a mixture of all of them but either way nothing wrong with a bit of hand work is there so let's get it done Right, so we have a clean workbench and now I can start working out where the rest of the splits are going to go on the body. So what I've done here is laid out the Buckeye underneath in the orientation that we want, laid on the negative template of it and then I've put the neck on top of that and lined it up with 
where it needs to be on there. So I know where the neck is going to intersect with the body and I can see the overall shape that I'm working with. Right, so the splits for the body. I did intend to have one up here, but then there's actually this hole here, which underneath, that's kind of going across this way. So if I cut through there, not entirely sure it's gonna look right. So I might move the split to sort of along here, maybe, making sure it's not going to interfere with the hollow section there. So that split is gonna go maybe like around here. Tell you what, I'm gonna come back to that one. Not entirely sure what I'm doing there. So the one down here, I've got a little split that's gonna go underneath the second bridge pickup. And then we've got the knot here. You probably can't see it where the camera is, but that's gonna take a scoop out the neck. I'll have to do that later on probably. And then we've got the little V that's gonna be cut in the bottom of the neck. So the body ends there. So let's see, that's roughly where the body's gonna be. The bridge is going to be anchored around it out here. So if I get one of them, that's where the anchor point's gonna be, which means the split can come just up to the bottom of that. Something like that. Right, I couldn't get this top split to look right, so I've just done it straight through that void there, and we'll just deal with the consequences later. I have a few ideas up my sleeve should a problem arise. So, the way I'm gonna do this body is, obviously this is a through neck, the oven coal is gonna be stuck to the side of this, and that's gonna make the body shape. Then this buckeye burr is gonna sit on top and it's gonna cover the oven coal that's here, it's gonna cover this bit, and it's gonna cover the oven coal here. But, instead of making the oven coal body out of one solid, I'm gonna make it out of a few different laminates in order to construct these splits in it. So what I'm gonna do is measure from the side of the neck to where the point of one of these cracks is, which is, 65 millimeters, I'm just gonna write that here, and to where this other one is, which is 70 millimeters. And then on this side, I've got the little split going on here. So from the side of the neck, that is 35 mil here. Yes, 35 mil there, that saves me a bit of effort. So to be honest with these, I might as well make them the same. So if I just bring that split down five millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is cut an ovan coal strip to 65 millimeters, which is gonna go in here. Then we're gonna cut half of this crack out of it. And then I'm gonna get another bit of ovan coal, which is eventually gonna go up here. And we're gonna cut another half of the split out of that as well. Then once we join them together, there'll be a hollow between those areas that we have cut out. And we'll do the same on here. We'll cut one that's 35 millimeters, then plane up another part of it, cut half the split out of that, stick it together, and we have created a split all the way through. It's far easier than getting inside it and trying to clean it out with rasps and things like I did here. If I do it in two separate parts, I can easily get access to each half. Okay, so before cutting these out, I drew little triangles on there to make sure I get the orientation correct when they glue back together. So there we go, that will be joined to the body, or sorry, to the neck. And then we'll be cutting this body shape out of it. But yeah, that's looking pretty swish, I think. So, um, right, let's try and get the outline of this guitar on there. Okay, and then I've got my rough body shape. This isn't gonna be the final thing that I cut to, but it's just nice to know where the body's actually gonna be on these blanks. Cool, and then if I get the rough measurements from the cracks that I drew on here, I know whereabouts they need to be. So in from the end, 35 millimeters along this split here. And that split is going to be 180 mil long. Then I know to bandsaw out. All of that area there. Right, and I think that is where I'm gonna call it for this episode because I want to drill the holes for the pipes and all that before cutting all of these scoops out of the body because it's gonna be a little bit easier, I think. I would have done it in this episode, but I left them at home. So we're not gonna do it today, but I will see you in the next episode. <laughs>